All right, all right, all right. It is uh, Tuesday. It is Tuesday live streams. Uh, welcome, welcome to Confluent YouTube channel. And uh, like I said, today is a Tuesday. Welcome to live streams. All events occur in the real time. And uh, it's great to be back. I don't know about you folks, but I miss the show and uh, it's uh, great to be back. And uh, today, um, as, a, as promised, some of you just like uh, came in, I actually bring some, uh, some friend here. And uh, today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my friend uh, from uh, Confluent, Amit Gupta. Today, he will be with us on the live stream. Amit, thanks, say thanks. hi to internet. People, uh, hey, hey, hey. we don't hear you for some reasons. Like, are oh, you no, no. on mute or something like that? No, no I, I actually, actually I don't know. For some reasons, I cannot, uh, I cannot hear you. And the reason for that, probably because my, uh, my um, audio system is too smart and uh, automatically mm -hmm. switching <laughs> from, from one uh, computer to, to another. So give me a quick second. I'll fix that to myself. <clears throat> All right. Awesome. Now I can hear you. All right, folks, um, let's make some noise in the comments. Um, let's see uh, if we have anyone uh, alive there. Just folks, let's do it. Let's do it. So we see uh, Patricia. Hello. Welcome to uh, welcome to live streams. Hello. hello. Um, hey, Patricia. We do have this. Um, we do have this tradition. If you joined us, like, let us know where you're coming from. Like, uh, uh, today I'm coming from uh, my <laughs> usual place. I'm coming from my office from uh, New Jersey. Amit, where are you coming to us today? Where are you coming from? I'm coming from uh, a sunny day in San Francisco today, San Francisco, California. That's great. Yeah. Wow. All right. So we people, uh, people start getting uh, in. So welcome from Germany. Uh, Rush uh, came from Germany. Great. How is the weather there, Rush? Um, I see Otto from Georgia. It's uh, one of our regulars. Welcome. How we like to say Gamarjoba. Uh, Alex from New Jersey. Um, I assume if it's a good evening for Yusam, he's coming somewhere from uh, Europe, uh, maybe. Um, Southern so Europe, there. Asia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Serdar from Germany. <laughs> Paolo from Italy. Kirill. How's it going? Oh, yep, yeah, uh, we were right. Yusam from Istanbul. Um, it's uh, it's great uh, to have uh, <laughs> and uh, it's too cold in Germany. Um, <laughs> that's not for long. I hope uh, I hope everything will be fine very very soon. <laughs> so we do have uh, Kenya, Muji. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Um, it's Patricia from Brazil. Welcome. It's it's yeah. great. Well, to have almost you. got all the comments. Almost got yeah. them all. Yeah, France. Uh, Rajesh from Phoenix, and uh, <laughs> Bonnie from uh, from uh, Virginia. It's great. Nice. Uh, wow, wow! We even have uh, people from Vietnam. So it's truly uh, we worldwide. From uh, Antarctica, and we we got them all. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Kirill from Moscow. Yeah, I think. Uh, that, like I always said, the timing where we have this live stream is, is perfectly working for many people to join. Uh, some people, it would be lunch breaks. For some people, it would be, um, you know, dinner. Like for Amit, I know it's, it's a breakfast. For me, it's a lunch. So um, that's, uh, that's, that's exciting. Um, once again, um, Amit, he's my uh, friend and expert in uh, Kubernetes, and uh, I was giving the, getting some requests from uh, from your folks when you were asking about talking about some of the you know the Kubernetes side of things. And uh, today um, we decided to bring rather a little bit complex topic, but I think um, we have a like good. Uh, um, a good quorum of people who can uh, break this down for you and uh, teach you some of the complex things. So today we're going to be talking about a couple things. We're going to be talking about connectors. We're going to be talking about uh, how to deploy connectors. 
And in most cases, connectors is uh, the systems that allow to connect to external systems. And in many cases, those external systems just not providing you with some like free access. Like we're trying to restrict this for the purposes of uh, separation of concerns, for the purposes of the uh, controlling the access to the resources, or just simply, you know, the, the, to get the access, uh, you paying for something, maybe you get a key so you can uh, get this data. And today we're gonna be talking about how to manage those, um, the, the, this, this information that requires uh, to get this access. So today we're gonna be connectors, Kubernetes, and secrets. And um, I asked Amit to kind of like a talk a little bit about this and like why we're going to be, uh, what we're going to be doing this and uh, why we're doing the way we're doing this. Right, Amit? So I will uh, pass the microphone to you so you will be able to um, talk us through what we're going to be doing today. Sounds good. All right, I'm switching to uh, your screen and you need to switch to your, yep. Me, so we will right, so let me bring up these, uh, these slides. So, um, you know, be before I get too much into it, you know, we're talking about, like Victor said, uh, connecting different data systems together. And, uh, you know, even, even if you're not, not thinking about Kafka or Confluent, but as, especially if you are, you know, this is where a lot of applications are going, connecting different systems together, moving data in real time between them. And then when you have all these systems and these microservices and these, you know, managed services, uh, well, for, for service A to talk to service B, you often need some sort of credential. So we'll do an example with a, with a pretty simple connector uh, today uh, where we're going to be talking to uh, GitHub and we're going to have a connector that's pulling information out of GitHub. Um, so that's just a simple example, but you're going to need some credentials to do that. So, you know, if you think about this and expand it to, to all the different touch points in your, in your architecture, you've got these credentials everywhere, right? So... So we've got like uh, disgusted Drake over here. You know, if you've got credentials at rest in multiple systems, if you're copying and pasting one credential and pasting it into another system and then copying it into another system, especially if people, you know, human beings are doing this, you know, if, you, if you've got a big uh, InfoSec team, they're probably not too happy about this. But even if you don't have a big InfoSec team, you know, with more and more software on the web, you know, these, these uh, security risks are, are lurking around the corner all the time. So, I do this all the time. I'm leaking, I'm leaking credentials to my Confluent Cloud all the time during this live stream. I'm just copy pasting, <laughs> and all of a sudden, half internet knows this. Um, yeah. so good thing that well, we do that have a like mechanism to prevent this leaking, so we can like very quickly to rotate those keys, right? So this, this yeah, maybe uh, next time we'll, we'll do a on rotating credentials as well. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, so you know what you what you want is credentials managed centrally, and the different components that need to those credentials, if they only get them only when they need them, only in memory, like that's the least exposure, you know, logically possible. That's the kind of world that, that we want to build. And, and then of course, if you can manage them centrally, if you can rotate them centrally, and then, you know, a, the dozen different systems that need any given credential can just kind of pick them up in real time. Uh, that's that's the kind of ideal uh, world we want to want to build towards. So. Um, excited to and be here. Excited to talk to everybody about that here. Um, I'm really and excited. There are a bunch of uh, bunch of tools available, as a matter of fact, because um, I know that um, right. um, you're probably busy meeting with some customers, and uh, different customers were bringing some of the different requirements for this centralized request management. But is it like a fair to assume or fair to, fair to say that there is a more or less uh, de facto standard or at least the most used tool that available and we want to support this in our um, in our tooling like uh, how this um, yeah, funny, centralized funny management that, so. thing looks looks to you yep yeah so we're going to be talking about hashicorp vault today um there are there are obviously more than one uh, secret management uh, solutions out there in the market, but uh, Vault is open source, it's cloud agnostic, um, and, and it's very widely popular. So Vault is the one that, you know, we're hearing about the most. Um, also, you know, a lot of the cloud providers have their own managed uh, key management services and that sort of thing as well. Uh, but Vault being open source and kind of cloud agnostic, People can be running it on-prem. They can be running it, you know, in a multi-cloud across different cloud environments and that kind of thing. 
So uh, Vault, Vault is kind of uh, um, the one we certainly hear the most about. Um, yeah, yeah. As well. So let me add, thing, like, go ahead. Yeah, another, another thing that uh, there might be like different tools, but like approach that we pick up today is generally like specifically like, Kubernetes and Connect that uh, I meet the uh, set. We're going to be using uh, like a GitHub uh, connector. Um, mm -hmm. The thing that we will show you and emphasize certain things can be uh, integrated with some other tools. Um, and uh, the approach that we focused is just like for, you know, to support this as part of Confluent Operator, but like you, it, you're not limited to use this one. There's a, there's a way how you can use like different things with, uh, with Connect. Right. So, so if we look at kind of the, uh, the benefits of this approach that, that are enumerated on this slide, that sort of minimizing exposure so that the credential access is only in memory and, and not exposed to other systems or users. It's managed centrally through Vault. That's, you know, that's the stuff that's making Drake happy on the previous slide. And then this flexible contract, um, the way it's been designed is uh, it's not, not that, you know, Confluent didn't write any Vault specific code. HashiCorp didn't write any Confluent specific code. It's based on a on a very flexible contract um, that's kind of just leveraging Kubernetes um, primitives and patterns. So, so in theory, the you know any any other player in the uh, secret management ecosystem can can implement the same contract, and and it can work. You know. Right? For, for any system. Write down uh, in the comments, folks, like if you are um, in the Kubernetes world and you also using any like a secret management tools or like centralized uh, secret or credential management that maybe like, I don't know, maybe Active Directory for some reasons, or maybe something like, uh, what's what's the thing from the Red Hat, like uh, something like Keycloak or things like that. So write down in the comments, uh, what are you using uh, that would be very, you know, interesting to, to, to learn like what um, yeah. what things people are using. We'd love to know what what everyone is using. So yeah. I've got you know one other picture to show you. This is a little bit about how it will work. So a little bit of a spoiler, if you will. Um, but the the gist of it is, uh, you know, you you provide an annotation, and that's kind of a Kubernetes pattern of uh, you can apply annotations to you know anything you deploy, and infrastructure kind of components like vault can read all the pods in your kubernetes cluster look for these annotations and dynamically kind of inject uh inject the secrets and so when that happens then when i go to actually create my connector if anybody who's familiar with uh working with the connect api and how you create connectors you know you're going to post a configuration and here's where you would rather than putting in your your credential kind of in plain text uh, you reference it. Um, you reference sort of an in-memory file system path uh, that that's part of this. That's kind of part of this annotation. So it's all kind of loosely coupled and and just ex uses this annotation idea, which um, you know anything can anything can have an annotation. So it's a very flexible kind of approach. So in um, in uh, this example, we're going to be using we're going to show some code like in details which part of the thing you know the we need to put. Um, I would like to say that if you are eager to try this out with us, even though we didn't announce this as a workshop or didn't announce this as a, like a hands-on experience, I mean it actually wrote a full-blown tutorial how you can do this. I will post this link in our um, in our YouTube chat so you can go and follow along. But essentially, you know, if you have a handy Kubernetes cluster, all things available here, you will be able to do this. You know, within you know how much time we have, like 45 minutes. Yeah, we will try to do this in 40, right? <laughs> so that's why uh, that's why we're here. That's why we're gonna be uh, doing some uh, some of the some of the cool things. And now I, for some reasons, um, the the you know <laughs> closed everything. So it happens. <laughs> so uh, today uh, we're gonna start with a small Kubernetes cluster. Let me show you the landscape of the things that we're doing here. So. Um, 
I already provisioned the Kubernetes cluster one, two, three, four, five, seven nodes. Uh, that should be more than enough to deploy uh, multiple uh, components, um, like um, uh, like deploy uh, the Kafka, deploy uh, Connect, uh, deploy Control Center, some 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 other things, um, and uh, that would be enough to um, uh, to do uh, for for our. Um, for our needs. You got Zookeeper and Vault also in there. So a little all bit the, All the components, right. So we will start with the uh, deploying Vault since it uh, seems the uh, uh, right thing to do. Um, and uh, while I'm doing this, uh, there might be a, um, there is a question, I meet, uh, that's why I brought you here uh, for answering some of the uh, questions. For example, uh, there's a question, if Vault gets compromised, all of our secrets will be compromised as well. So is it fair to say that this is a single point of failure? Uh, you know, it may be, yeah. I think uh, if you have your credentials in a bunch of different places, so if you wanna do it that way, you can have multiple vaults and you can kind of choose this trade-off of blast radius and, uh, and you know, being able to apply security practices in one place. So what a lot of folks do will have a separate vault for production and, you know, other vaults for deploy, uh, you know, development environments. I think the thing to think about is uh, securing these things is very hard. So you're typically uh, always trying to find the best practices for, for securing things. And what's really hard is to apply the same kind of best practices to multiple different uh multiple different situations so the good thing about you know this approach is you can choose where on the spectrum you want to be from having you know uh one central vault to to maybe a handful probably the right number is like some handful to having you could have hundreds but then you're probably not getting a lot of value out of it once you're once you've got that many Another, um, another answer that I usually have, like if your wall that runs inside your Kubernetes cluster is compromised somehow, you probably have a bigger problem right now. Like, because like if the, uh, the intruder was able to get inside your Kubernetes cluster to get access to this one, so probably there was some other things misconfigured. So you will uh, provide it this, you know, the access to, to this, to this vault. And uh, um, as I mean, mentioned, it, vault is pretty, lightweight system to, to, to maintain, to deploy. So you might have uh, for different applications or for different like departments or different line of businesses, you might have a different vaults. Um, and uh, do they have like uh, some, some sort of mechanism of synchronizations There's, or like a, you know, replication or cross replication in case we need to have like a cross domain trusts or like a, some, some, something like that? Yeah, I think they do, I think they do. They also, in HashiCorp has recently announced, uh, I think it's a beta managed service for Vault. So over time, you know, you'll probably see Vault become even increasingly easy to manage, you know? So the Victor, uh, uh, different Victor, not me, uh, is actually said, uh, Vault deployment can be redundant and resilient. So it can be uh, deployed in uh, multiple uh, different uh, configurations. Let me bring this uh, comments back to, uh, uh, back to jazz. So yeah, that's uh, that's possible to do already. Um, at this point, um, single point of failure, you will need to deploy redundant and resilient and hardened system. Yep, that's uh, that's that's uh, we ag we agree on on this one. Yeah. All right. It's so, like any distributed system. You got to deploy it in a HA fault tolerant way because it's storing your credentials. Uh, you know, I think the there's kind of a operational risk, like if it falls down, does it become unavailable? And there's a security risk, like if it gets breached, are all your credentials breached? So that's where you do have to be, you know, just a little bit thoughtful about uh, how you, you know, how you manage one or more vault clusters. So we get into like we use a Helm to install this. Um, we use a Helm to install this uh, the, the the vault component, and now we have this mm -hmm. up and running. So. We need to do a couple things here. So, um, with the um, in this case, I will open the um, open the shell here. So we need to do a couple things. So first of all, we will add um, the enable Kubernetes uh, notification for Vault. 
right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it will um, integrate with the, with the our Kubernetes thingy. And after that, uh, we need to provide the access so the world can get access to, um, to Kubernetes APIs. So the reason for that... Yes, I can maybe order... give a little play-by-play, -play, you know, as you're, as you're entering these commands, what's going on. Uh, what we're doing is we're teaching Vault to kind of trust Kubernetes as an authentication provider. Um, so kind of like how you, you maybe have single sign-on at work and you can sign on to all your systems with, with one thing. This is kind of like that. You're basically teaching Vault that Kubernetes itself is a trusted authentication provider. And where this is going to be uh, useful is when we deploy Connect, uh, you know, anything you deploy to Kubernetes gets a service account, which is kind of a uh, like a machine identity or an application identity uh, for that thing. And what we're going to teach uh, Vault is to trust only the Connect pod to get the secret that we're about to give it, which is to, to access our, our GitHub repo. Uh, so, you know, we don't, um, we don't need to, you know, we're not just kicking the can down the road in, in terms of kind of giving connect a password to get to vault. Cause then are you really securing your GitHub password? Uh, it's all baked into the platform, right? In terms of the identity yeah. and authentication. Yeah. So, um, now we need to have uh, some storage where we're going to be storing this uh, like a secret thing, right? And uh, this is mm -hmm. what uh, we're going to be using this like a key value uh, system of, uh, uh, enable. Now, yep. so we are going to be using, let me show the people what we're going to be using for now. If I'm going to uh, Confluent uh, Hub, which is uh, the landing page for all things connect that you would be interested. Um, and I will show you that we're going to be using today. So we, have, we will be using this uh, GitHub source connector that essentially, um, it's something that's easy to demonstrate data without like, a, I used to use Twitter, but uh, you yeah. know, when you go in Twitter, it's always fun uh, thing to see. And there's uh, some of the, some interesting thing that might happen on Twitter. So that's why we it may not be the best like, for live stream. Live, exactly, yeah. So that's why we yeah. have a live data, uh, but uh, it's uh, still like uh, controlled and, and stuff like that. So we're going to be you using this be one. For, uh, control proof. Exactly. And uh, um, with this uh, detailed instruction, you will you will learn like what exactly uh, you need to use, but we already know what exactly we need to have here. So uh, in uh, I, I created this repository called My Connect for live streams, and uh, one of the things that I you know uh, I will be using is to get the access to this uh, to this repository programmatically. So that's why um, there is a thing called uh, the personal access uh, access token uh, that's available in the GitHub. So we need to acquire this. So since I already this copy. Uh, copy this token somewhere so it will not appear on your screen. But a couple things that um, this uh, token should be, or like holder of this token should be able to do is to get the access to repository status and uh, get access to public repositories. So essentially, we were getting the uh, history of commits uh, and um, uh, it will have uh, access to all public repositories in my in my account in this case. So. That's why Just in, I already a little bit more context on you know what we're going to be doing. It's a pretty simple thing. You know, maybe you wouldn't do this in real life, but it's just simple to demonstrate of a, a connector pulling data to somewhere and putting it into a stream. But what this is going to be doing is watching this repo that Victor created, and then we can commit to that repo. Connector is going to be looking for commit messages, and that's what's going to go into the topic. So that's why we're creating this GitHub account and this access token and all that sort of stuff. So inside the inside the vault, we will using this uh, the put method for uh, our internal vault, and uh, our key would be access token, and this is our value. Um, this is uh, this is it. Basically, this is like uh, uh, the vault part is over, except uh, this uh, the policy that we need to uh, uh, policy file we need to create. I mean, uh, why we yeah. Need this. So so let me give the play by play. So. The way Vault kind of permissions work is you have, you know, you have secrets and then you have policies which allow something to access the secret. And then you have sort of a policy binding where you bind a, a some sort of identity to that policy. So we're going to be binding the connect 
uh, Kubernetes identity to the policy that Victor just created to allow reading to this token so that ultimately when we deploy the connector, uh, it will, uh, it'll be able to get this credential from Vault. So this is exactly what we're doing. This is the this is the way where where the uh, the binding is actually happening. So we have this uh, yeah. uh, what namespace, uh, what service account will be able to get access to this particular vault. So that's right. um, that's what we're configuring here. Um, so you'll those, notice there process, the it's a namespace yeah. confluent and uh, the name the service account name is connect. We haven't created those yet, but we can create the policy and the binding in advance so that when we go and go ahead and actually create the connector and launch it into the Confluent namespace in Kubernetes, uh, then it'll just work. Yep. So yeah. um, I think we're done with uh, connect, uh, or oh, sorry, uh, the vault at this point. So we will uh, have everything that we need. And the rest of the stuff is just like a Confluent, plat uh, Confluent platform and Confluent operator, essentially. Um, so um, I'm going out of here and just let's see. We don't have anything else. Uh, we do have only vault here, so it's time to um, it's time to bring some of the you know the confluent components, right? So we will use this uh, namespace that uh, we just already bound into um, into this like uh, in the vault. And now I will create the service account inside our namespace that will be able to get access to those credentials inside the vault. That's that's what we created on this on the previous step. So that's what we did over here. So that's that's what we, that's what um, Amit uh, was talking about. Now, how yeah. you do um, how you can bring the uh, this custom connector. So there are. Uh, connectors that are already maybe published somewhere in Docker Hub. And if you go to, um, to where is it? Uh, do, 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 do. Confluent Hub. Um, only thing that you can find here is the, uh, the binary version of the connector. So if I will just do here, uh, just do GitHub. Uh, and um, um, you will have only like a zipped version. You don't have a Docker version, so you need to have a Docker image. Um, it's it's actually also like very often questions uh, people asking like where we can find um, the images for all possible connectors. And the answer is here: you create those, right? So we can come up with some predefined uh, behavior of certain connectors in certain images. However, um, I think it was uh, General. Hatton who said that, you know, like not every plan will be able to basically stand with reality. So we have mm -hmm. some assumptions about how the people will use this, but like every next customer that we meet, they say, oh, no, we cannot use this because we have a special images to do so. So that's why uh, that's why we recommend you to create your own um, images for that. So that's why I have this Docker right. file here. So yeah, we so do have we, some you know, we've got over Go like a hundred connectors. We've got over a hundred connectors in the hub, and you can build your own connectors with the connect framework. So with this kind of pattern, you can mix and match, and uh, you know, use as you can see on Victor's screen. You start from our base image for connect to so the CP server connect operator, and then you can, if you look on line three, uh, run Confluent Hub install, and you can see he's installing the the GitHub connector. You can install whichever ones you think you're going to use. You can, you know, add in any homegrown connectors you may have built, uh, and so yeah. you can kind of tailor your connect images to exactly the connectors you want, with no additional kind of uh, bloat and an excess of stuff that you don't want. But another thing that also important to to say: sometimes people asking. Um, it's a very typical question when the people asking to use like GDBC connector and how we can bring um, you know GDBC driver. Um, many people know that for certain um, licensing restrictions, some of the GDBC driver cannot be shipped with connector. For example, if we're talking about some commercial databases like Oracle, I think the things change slightly because right now the Oracle GDBC driver is also published somewhere like a Maven Central. So you will be able to, but there's some license restriction that you cannot prepackage this. The users need to download those themselves. So that's why, like having this customization, and uh, you can uh, you can build this as an end user and put this as a part of your package. But as a software vendor, we not you know we need to have a, like a special um, 
probably it's 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 up to kind of like a, if we will start to distribute the Oracle driver, we will become kind of sort of like a distributor. So they need to sign an agreement that we you know doing uh, the selling for them and things like that. So that's why yeah. having custom connector is a good thing to have. And you don't. There's multiple approaches how you can do this. One approach would be baked all the jars uh, into your image. Another approach would be using kind of like a sidecars, right? You have a, another mm -hmm. image that will bring all the jars. You will expose the folder in one thing and you will mount this folder into another container. For me, it's a little bit dirty. I believe in uh, build once, uh, you know, run everywhere. So that's why I prefer my image to have. Uh, all these uh, type of things. So um, that's um, that's that that's why we have it here. And uh, once I I already done this, so I don't want to like spend the time and bandwidth here right now. So I build this image and push it into my uh, Docker registry. Just for simplicity, um, you can push this into uh, whatever uh, Docker registry you're using. Uh, cloud providers have a just for simplicity, in order to make it uh, you know nice and clean. We'll just use this one. Um, once we've done with uh, this, um, next step is to download Confluent Operator, where we can get the Confluent Operator. So if you go to, uh, not the hub, why, why are we doing it in the hub? Uh, actually, we do have this uh, a link that uh, you, can, uh, you can bypass uh, uh, the, the multiple other steps you can get and download the uh, operator uh, binaries from this link. So there would be a link into um, into chat so you can go directly download this this bundle uh, that will include Helm charts with uh, with operator um, and. Uh, Another clarification for like we're using Helm charts just to simplify deployment and provide kind of like a out of the box experience that will you know simplify deployment, uh, but uh, by no means uh, you obligated to use this. Um, it's um, you can go and generate this uh, uh, templates Kubernetes objects uh, using Helm and after that just do manual. Helm just makes it a little bit easier, right? I mean, well, so. Uh for our next release of Operator uh, coming in a couple months, which is it's out there in early access already, so, so folks can take a look. Um, we're really uh, moving to in an even more Kubernetes native approach. So uh, we have, if, you, if you've played around with the Operator already, whether the Confluent Operator or any other Operator, you may be uh, familiar with this idea of a custom resource definition, a CRD which is a way to extend the Kubernetes API to provide higher level APIs. So you know Kubernetes has an API resource like a pod or a service or an ingress. Well, we're adding uh, API resources to the Kubernetes API called Kafka, called Control Center, called Schema Registry, and so on. Um, so you will be able to use, you, you know, it becomes, like I said, Kubernetes native, so you can create those YAMLs, you know, directly uh, you can use whatever, you can use customize if you're familiar with that. You could use Helm on top of that. You can use whatever approach you want to, uh, to build on top of like the core APIs. But our goal of, of uh, you know, offering these higher level API constructs is that it's simple, that you don't need any additional tooling on top. So uh, if you do check out the Operator 2 early access, you'll see examples of, you know, deploying the whole platform, all the different components with, um, you know, just a just a few lines of like pure pure Kubernetes YAML with no no Helm or stuff on top. The only place where we probably still will have Helm is for deploying the operator itself because there's kind of a chicken egg problem. So we'll we'll yeah. deploy the operator with Helm as it's kind and of and let's nice uh, let's start with this. Uh, let's start with the uh, deploying the operator again. So I literally let's have this bundle um, like extracted here. So the Mm -hmm. um, everything is here. Everything is just like like this. Um, I created a configuration file in order to kind of overwrite default behavior. So so right now I'm using GCP. It's uh, my you know place where I will be deploying stuff. Um, do you have some configuration for Zookeeper? Do you have some configuration for for Kafka? And here's like a good thing. This is thing that we discussed. Um, let me switch my screen. I I realized that I 
I am not showing uh, showing my screen. I apologize for that. So in um, in this um, in this uh, in this in this section, uh, this is like a global configuration for uh, for operator, uh, for Zookeeper, for Kafka, and now this is for Connect. This is how we can tell uh, these uh, annotations that um, uh, Damit was uh, was talking about. Those annotations are um, will be used by they call it like agent, right? So the there's yeah, so here's, here's where kind of the the magic happens, if you will. If you um yeah, yeah there's so you see guy, there's injector. Agent injector. Right. So if we go back to the config, you'll see this um, line uh, 27 agent inject true. So what that vault agent inject so when, when uh, Victor deployed vault one through Helm, it also deployed this agent injector. And so that agent injector is just watching everything in Kubernetes, looking for this annotation and whenever it sees it it's going to include a, an additional container whose responsibility will be to uh to get the secret from vault and uh basically put it into a file and this is the what the other annotations are telling you so basically what it's telling you uh on line 29 it says go look in go look in vault at internal uh slash data slash github if you remember that's where i think victor put it in internal github and write it to a file called um database config.txt so where it will end up is a in an in-memory mounted file system so not not the actual file system because that would be insecure but it's an in-memory temporary file system that'll be inside the pod at slash vault slash or sorry slash uh yeah i think it's slash vault slash secrets slash database config.txt and what's going to be in that file is actually determined by this template below so if you look in line 31 to 32 uh basically it's going to uh, read the access token out of vault and create a file it's going to be a very simple file the file is just going to say access token equals whatever the value of that access token is so this file format that we're creating is is the file format that um, that the connect that connect is going to expect. So uh, we'll get to that maybe when we get to actually deploying the yeah. connector. But keep in yeah. mind, like the things to keep in mind here is there's a file that's going to look like access token equals blah, and we just need to know the path of that file and the structure of that file, which we're, we ourselves are determining here, and we'll use that information when we deploy the connector configuration so that we won't actually put credentials in the connector we will put instead a, a special kind of um a special invocation that tells connect look in this file at this uh at this thing called access token so yeah. in um Kafka 2.0, right? We introduced uh, community introduced this concept of externalized the secret, um, and uh, we're going to be leveraging here um, today. Like I'll, I'll show you in a few um, in a few seconds. But like let's um, let's deploy our our bits. So yeah. we we bring in the, um, uh, the operator itself. Uh, so operator will create the custom resources. Um, and the customer store definition. And after that, uh, we'll be able to um, see, this is our guy. This is our guy starting. This is our guy is deploying. So we'll see some of the uh, log information is here. So something, something, it's up and running. We're good. Now, so the next thing is that um, if I go and do a key, um, uh, get CRDs, what we will see here, there's a bunch of stuff, but specifically, uh, we do, we're interested in a few things. So there's a CRD called Kafka cluster and uh, uh, Zookeeper cluster and physical stateful cluster. So those are components, those custom resources that Amit was talking about, those custom resources will be able, um, will be used to manage the deployment of our Kafka. So that's why if I'll do k get Kafka, I will not have anything because we didn't deploy anything, but at least we will get a um, uh, the customer source already available. So let's do this one. So we'll go 
I'll go and do a zookeeper. Um, and uh, again, those configurations are available. You can uh, download and the, the, this like demo setup I also will share into, um, um, into our live streams repository, as, as, as you know. So this is, um, uh, this is what's going to happen. So those zookeeper clusters will be created um, uh, in a second. So if I will just do k get uh, zookeeper, uh, and what we will see here, it's not a file, what's the, okay, get the keeper, ah, okay. Um, yeah, it seems like it's a to different, uh, Confluent uh, namespace. Uh, yep. Um, I will switch to namespace and after that, I uh, will be able to do uh, zookeeper stuff. So, um, this, is, uh, this is all good, this is all very interesting, but what we're looking <laughs> here is a status thing. So, those things as a standard, so that's why like your tools will be able to get the status information from any resources. In this particular case, it says right now provisioning and the current replica is zeros and requested replicas should be something like three or, or yeah, we will ask for three replicas. So if I run mm -hmm. this command once again, like you will be able to see that uh, it was able, it was fully provisioned. Now, there is a status of a point to change a little bit. It gives um, uh, information about endpoint. So those um, applications who need to do the discovery, they will be able to query this API and connect to the keeper, for example. So now it's up and running. So we will uh, ready to deploy our Kafka cluster. Um, in, in this particular case. So um, with uh, similar similar approach, if I do get Kafka, Kafka minus uh, O uh, YAML. So let's see how this Kafka look like. So it's very similar to, um, very similar to the keeper, but like some of the things that we interested in right because it's uh, related to kafka and since it's a custom resource we have this uh, you know dsl style right we do have this yeah. ability to um only have configuration that's specific to to kafka in this case we instead of just like going and doing like stateful sets instead of doing this um the um how you call it um yeah, uh, persistent volume claims and all this kind of stuff. Right, We're yeah. only focusing on deploying a Kafka cluster. Now it's a kind of, you know, yeah. And wanna, if, you, if you look at, yeah, if if you look at, uh, you know, as a user, you're kind of responsible for lines 92 to 122, so kind of like 30 lines, you know. Yeah. Uh, and if you look at under the hood, the operator is creating stateful sets and all that kind of stuff. So if you look at those, yeah. so that's going to have a lot. Gigas. Set full uh, state. STS. Full so. sets, yes. Yep. So there's like a. Uh, if I'll just do stateful sets, Kafka. It still will be, you know, the stateful set uh, in terms of Kubernetes, uh, but yeah. much more like verbose and uh, like uh, less domain specific, more Kubernetes specific. And there's a lot of things yeah. that needs to be taken care of. Yeah, and beyond that, you know, what the a lot of the power of the operator comes from, it do, it's doing more than just creating a stateful set. So, you know, Kafka needs to be, when you're updating Kafka, you need to do some intelligent things. If you want to minimize, uh, you know, any blips, for example, you want to roll the active controller last. Um, and so Kubernetes doesn't know which of your brokers is the active controller, but uh, the operator is able to. So the operator actually does a more kind of delicate dance uh, when when doing upgrades or when um, you'll see more and more, especially with operator 2.0, uh, yeah. uh, generating TLS credentials and and lots of good stuff that the that doesn't come straight out of the box with just pure stateful sets. So think of it as like stateful sets with all the best knowledge of running Kafka in production at scale for years baked into that intelligent operator. So once I run this and status change right now, so um, I it's have a current number of replicas, uh, requested replicas, and some other thing also important. That's uh, that's why I like this approach. So my application don't need to have this kind of predefined. My application can get this information out of the um, the 
basically from this API. And as you can see mm -hmm. here, this is actually like a property file that you can just like throw in and uh, start using this uh, with the start using this like with with any application. So. Mm -hmm. um, so the next thing is that we deploy control center. So the control center is our um, uh, tool that allows to uh, do some monitoring. Uh, we can do like a command line all day, but like nothing beats all good, um, you know, <laughs> UI uh, with, uh, you know, the accessing the things. It's um, nice to have two dimensions and some colors. Right, exactly. That's although, why, that's why even on a on terminal. Colors. Yeah. Even on terminal, I have uh, these uh, colors and stuff. So that's why we we'll, yeah. we'll love to see, you know, the, 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 the fanciness of the things. Yeah. Yeah. Canines, so the I don't really get it, but it looks pretty cool. Canines. Yeah. So um, uh, while it's uh, loading, let's see some of the comments that we have um, uh, people. So people asking, so in common, what's the advantages of all their approaches like config maps, etc. Or the, go ahead, if you don't want to take this, I can talk about this as well. Um, so Kirill, I'm not uh, totally sure what you're referring to. If you're talking about operators or you're no, talking no, like, about- I think the approach, the, the cr credentials versus, approach? yeah, the credential management approach. Yeah, so there's a few advantages. Uh, you know, I think one of them is that uh, if you've got a lot of Kubernetes clusters, right, and you have to, uh, you have secrets, you know, managed somewhere else, uh, it gets really out of hand if you have to create config maps in, and secrets in all of your systems that need to access something. Uh, so being able to kind of just, um, manage them centrally and having your workloads fetch them dynamically, that's the least exposure you can possibly kind of uh, have, right? So like, for example, in this case, if someone can read config maps, um, you, know, you don't have to worry about somebody being able to read config maps and, and seeing those credentials. Uh, also like config maps and, and secrets uh, in the Kubernetes ecosystem, they're not, you know, they're, they're not the state of the art credential management. It's kind of like the, and it's the a, least... like a security through obscurity. It gives you base 64 hash of the password, but it's not yeah. doesn't prevent you for like unhash it, right? So you can use on base 64 and you, all of a sudden you get the, all the passwords. Yeah, right. People can uh, what people typically do there is they they can encrypt the etcd database. Um, but it's it's a very kind of uh, coarse grained approach, right? It's still yeah, you know, if, if you're to think from first principles, like how could you, what was, what would be the least possible exposure of a credential? You know, what are the least places you can put it, the least uh, people it can, you can give it access to, uh, the least likelihood of, you know, having it stored on disk anywhere, um, then like config maps are not that sort of optimal approach. There's another approach that combines uh, config map and it uh, tend to be, um, it's not, it's not eliminate the need of having the like centralized uh, uh, credential management. There's like seal secrets, but the seal secrets is not about storing the things encrypted. It's about delivering se se the secrets into your Kubernetes cluster. So you, mm -hmm. call, the, you can keep encrypted version of the secret inside your Git. And after that, uh, once the uh, Git operator, like Git, GitOps operator will uh, provision the secret, um, it will kind of like a, um, you know, decrypt this, but still it will be stored inside Kubernetes as a config map. So you need to I include the kind of like a, some RBAC rules in order to, um, you know, get to, um, uh, so to prevent people from accessing uh, this, this particular secret. So, um, yeah, so in this case, I think it's, it's a different approach. It's uh, something that you need to decide in uh, your organization, like how you're handling this type of situation. So there's no, yeah. there's no like a right or wrong approach. It's a good thing and bad thing. This is like, I, I like to talk about Kafka as well. You know, there's no, there is some of the, like uh, the bad ways to do things. And we're trying to educate people not to do this ways. However, Kafka has like so many knobs and Kubernetes has so many knobs and there's so many products that are available to solving the certain problems, right? And um, 
the many people were asking about this, uh, this type of approach. So they use this for other things and they want to have this as a centralized managed. Um, yeah. The Bonnie has a question. Uh, do we have any timeline when the operator 2.0 will be released? Yeah, I think uh, we're we're getting very close. Uh, you know, I think no sort of public dates yet, but uh, I would say like about a month or two. So it's right. It's pretty we, uh, on the on the Confluent YouTube channel. You can get a video. There's a video that we did um, for KubeCon, yeah. and we mm -hmm. emphasize some of the you know bits of Operator 2.0. Uh, we will post the link if you're interested to get into the early access. Um, you will put your name and um, uh, your email and we will send you credentials so you can play around if you're in this type of jazz. All right, uh, keep them coming, folks. The questions are incredible, so that's why we're here to have some of the uh, conversation. Now, so we're going to be um, uh, putting some of this stuff. Uh, this is control center that I will be able to, to use. And before I start this, uh, let me show you why I am doing here. So my uh, connector uh, has this uh, configuration um, that we're going to be deploying in a second. So first thing here is that we're using the thing that Amit uh, um, helped to, uh, to explain is um, accessing to um, access, topics, uh, access token. So in this particular case, um, there is a configuration parameter called GitHub access token that will be a part of a connector configuration. Um, this, um, this is what... Uh, um, the vault will provide for, for, for us. So this is uh, where this is access token will be uh, mounted yeah. to our so, connector. So if you remember in our annotations in the previous file, we had a, it said kind of database config.txt, you know, on line 29. Um, you know, a little bit funny, I think, the, the, the design, but you, you attach it on to the end of this annotation. Uh, so everything after agent inject secret dash, that's the name of your file. And so that will end up at slash vault slash secrets slash this file. And then what's in the file is access token equals and then the actual access token. So now if you go back to the config uh, JSON, you'll see the file path colon access token. And this is basically uh, this externalized secrets thing that, that Victor was referring to before where rather than putting any secrets in your uh, connector configs, you can put file colon, some path, colon, some key, and, and yeah. assuming your that file inside looks like key equals value, key equals value, key equals value. Yep. So um, another thing that we're also only interested in this particular case uh, in uh, commits, so that's why we will have this uh, the topic called GitHub dash commits um, at this point. So I will uh, go ahead and create those. Uh, number of partitions, my favorite number. Um, create with defaults, and in this case, this topic will be um, available there. So the we have a Kafka, we have um, a Zookeeper, we have Control Center. Now we need to have our connect thingy, right? Uh, so let's uh, let's deploy uh, our connect uh, as well. Uh, and in this case, we will have this guy. So let's take a look inside the config again. Um, this is the image that we'll be, we will be using. I build this image and push it in the Docker um, in the Docker Hub. So this is where I'm specifying the uh, registry. So in this case, it's going to be Docker Hub, and after that, we'll use my image to to deploy. The rest of the stuff it's a um, uh, mix of the standard Connect uh, framework bits that available in uh, Apache Kafka, plus some of the uh, things uh, in order to operator to work with um, with this image. So so that's why uh, we recommend to start this uh, base image from our base image in order to this connector will work with operator. So we're getting this uh, connectors thing. And uh, as you can see here, so there's interesting. So once we started, um, once we started this deployment, uh, based on the annotation, uh, the, uh, the Vault was able to um, attach this agent as a another container, another um, uh, another like a pod 
uh, inside inside our um, inside yeah, our it's container. A, it's in it's an init container inside the pod. And so there's actually like I think a couple ways to do this. You can do it as an init container or as a what people sometimes call a sidecar container. And it's your choice of whether you kind of want this to just be there initially or if you want this to be there the whole time while the connector is running. The kind of pros and cons are if you have it as an init container, uh, you know, this this thing has a little bit extra privilege, right? Because it's actually getting credentials from Vault. So if you're really, you know, security sensitive and you don't want it to be running at the same time as your co connectors, because you don't, for some reason, trust the connectors to directly have access to this thing, then you can do it in this init container mode. So the init container will talk to Vault, put it in memory, in the in-memory file system, and then connect a little bit to get at it later. Uh, if you do it as a sidecar thing, then the benefit is it can keep refetching, refetching the credentials from Vault you know, periodically. So let's say this credential gets leaked uh, and you go update it, you know, your, your security admin can go update the credential in HashiCorp Vault and it will kind of magically show up in the, uh, alongside the connector kind of in real time. Uh, today, the, the connector itself wouldn't really pick up the new value in real time anyways. So there's not so a lot of benefit. So we need to bounce it? Yeah. Right yeah, so we're going to need to bounce it. Exactly. Um, so what, what I've been trying to do right now is to uh, running the connector and see what kind of uh, if, no, our um, resting point is not ready yet. So so it's, it's bringing this uh, um, connector runtime um, up and uh, we're waiting until it will be up. So we will be able to um, uh, we'll be able to deploy our configuration to start the connector. Um, so now connector is, is up and running. So what I can do is get a list of the connectors available. So I um, did a local port forwarding here, and that's why K9S, it's amazing. I can do everything in the, on the UI, so I don't need to switch to different screens so you folks see what I'm doing here. So a couple things that this base image actually includes only uh, um, the, the connectors that come in for, with Apache Kafka. So that's why um, the thing that was, we, we stated in the very beginning, like if you don't have like a bloated image with like all bells and whistles, you don't need, um, so in this case, just like use this base image, it's already uh, was uh, like a trim down uh, and we use um, the only th connector that we need to use. This is a GitHub uh, source connector. That's what we're going to be using. So um, configuration-wise, um, I showed this uh, JSON to you, and it's time to submit this configuration. So in my, uh, where's my commands? Um, I will just go ahead and uh, submit this uh, using curl. Uh, 25, 25 years uh, this week is um, 25th anniversary of curl. So it's a pretty awesome tool. I don't know how the people would uh, live without it. Um, so I submitted this, and now um, this is just like an outputs the configuration, and uh, let's see if I get the status correctly. So running and failed. So let's see what oh, no. is. Uh, <laughs> oh no! Yeah. So let's see here. So we get what do we have here. So API. API test connect. So I probably using a wrong uh, repository, which is which is mm -hmm. totally fine. Uh, oops, sorry, k I s I will uh, resubmit this. Uh, the uh, where is our uh, the um, curl uh, delete. Uh, no, wrong one. So what's the uh, curl uh, remove? I do have this. I I, I do have it. Uh, connect. Uh, delete delete connector. All right. So we will uh, do delete the connector. So we stop the connector. Let's see if it's not it's not running. So let's always check the configurations, especially it's alive, folks. You see it's alive. There's no, so uh, GitHub repository. We made it it's like almost an hour with, with, uh, with zero, zero live, uh, you know, live issues. Hiccups. So I think that's, yeah, exactly. that's pretty good. So um, we're going in. 
Uh, and in this case, it's going to be something like this, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, my connect for live stream. So that's, uh, that should work um, in this particular case. So let's do this. Um, and where's my curl that submits uh, my connector? Yeah. Okay, so uh, because I closed my uh, uh, I closed my K9S, so that's why my port forwarding died. So let's submit this one more time. Uh, my connectors already exist. It's supposed to be uh, it's supposed to be delete this connector uh, to do. All right. So, and here we go. Now, nice. and I will just do status. Um, we'll do status, running, running. Okay, cool. So now, Amit, could you do me a, uh, could you do me a favor? <laughs> just go and create some of the uh, commits in. Uh, yeah, this, happy uh, to. Yeah. So. so uh, I, meanwhile, I will open um, Control oh, Center God. UI so we will, can see some of the uh, messages that are coming into this. Oh, yeah, because I broke, um, I broke the session. So in this case, go in Control Center. I'll just do uh, open the port again. So we'll Wait a second. Have this a is the joy of live stream. I got a two-factor auth into my GitHub. Uh, but it's a good thing that I'm not showing the, your screen right now, so that's why like everything is happening on my screen. Um, and uh, meanwhile, I will also try to do something here. So if I'll go here and say, uh, this is the test. This is uh, the t a test, a test from live stream. Uh, live stream. So, and I'll just do uh, update readme, and I'll just do commit directly in the main branch. So what happens, uh, it should pick up here, and it just, uh, yeah, that just, uh, just happened. So my uh, commit, this is information that just happened on the GitHub. I got uh, all things that I can investigate here. So, for example, updated uh, readme md. That's uh, that's what I did. And uh, let's see if uh, Amit will be able to uh, collectively uh, <laughs> edit this repository as well. So we just got Ooh, another one. So got it. let's just see <laughs> here. Yeah, that's uh, that's how we roll this. So Amit just updated this in the right. Remember, like I said, is the tagline of this uh, the show is all events occur in real time. So that's what you see. So, in this particular case... And a little bit of extra spice and excitement right at the end. Yeah, yeah. So, we, uh, you know, if it would be, like, everything perfect, it, it would be not that, uh, uh, not that uh, exciting and not that interesting. So, um, if you want to learn a little bit more, there is a Keep 415, as far as I can tell, Kafka Connect. Um, I probably... Um, or 405. No, it's a different one. So keep. You're Kafka looking for which keep one? The externalized? External. Secrets? I forgot the name. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes, it's a keep 297. So keep 297 uh, talks good, about like, externalized. Kafka Summit, uh, you know, game we could play is like, do you know your kips? Exactly, it's a th th trivia, <laughs> yep, exactly, like I hope uh, our uh, the people who watch us right now know what's the KEEP 500 and uh, they are very excited about this. So yes, KEEP uh, 297, Externalize the Secret for Connect Configuration, this is where like you can get more details about what is going on uh, with, all this, uh, with all this jazz. And uh, it's not necessarily, uh, like we said, it's not necessarily would be relevant to like something that Vault people need to do in order this to work or something Kafka people need to do uh, in order this to work or Confluent people doing uh, in order to make this, this work. So this is the, the part of the standard. It's a part of Apache Kafka. We just support this in our tooling and we provided a, you know, the validation of this and provide an example how you can use this in your, um, in your life and in your, in your work essentially right um, 
Next thing that I would like to uh, quickly uh, point out that um, um, things that we did today available as a blog post. You can find the link in the description below. Amit did a great job to um, uh, explaining everything here and the you know dumb people like myself were able to just copy paste this comment and do it this and it worked you know uh, it's uh, it's incredible. Um, I think my next step would be to try to do this with some other connectors. I do have a, my usually like a, my Twitter connector that um, yeah. uses multiple um, multiple keys specifically there's a um, like a secret, there's a identity key, so it's like four different combinations, and I'm looking forward to use this with Vault. Yeah, if you, if you try this out with to... some fun use cases and some fun connectors, I'd love to hear about it, and you know, I'd love to hear folks share about uh, the cool things they might do with this. If you joined us today for the first time, thank you and welcome. Uh, but if you liked it, I wrote a blog post about like the famous or like my favorite episodes of live streams that happened um, within the last year. So it is episode 23 and uh, we're getting close to like a season finale um, on of the season one of live streams. And it's pretty exciting because like it's not... It's not like we have this like small shows like uh, Netflix with the eight episodes. We have an old school season with 24 season, uh, episodes. And um, so for that, which brings us to another one, um, episode 24. It's going to be another workshop that we brought up to you. Uh, I brought another friend of mine, uh, Anton Arhipov. He's uh, from JetBrains. We're going to be talking about Confluent. Uh, cloud, uh, we're going to be talking about Kotlin and the microservices with Ktor. Uh, if you want to watch this, uh, do not forget to, you know, sign up. Um, the reason why we need you to sign up, because I need to know how many uh, free money to bring to the table, meaning that like we'll give you access to Confluent Cloud, but I need to know how many coupons I need to request. So um, go ahead and register for it's going to be next week. I hope I will see many of you there. Uh, with this, I would like to say huge thank you to Amit for making this show not that boring and not that, uh, you know, Victor <laughs> doing the talking all the time. I'm, uh, I'm super excited that uh, we finally have a spring here. As you can see, Amit has some greens and I have uh, some, some flowers. You got a on me. floral jacket. Uh, we got and, a, uh, your background on your, on your laptop was that too. So a little bit of uh, floral greenery theme going on, you know. Do not forget to go and uh, follow Amit in uh, in Twitter, and uh, you can always ask his him uh, questions in uh, Confluent Community Slack, uh, where uh, he looking for like answering questions all around Kubernetes, um, and uh, his knowledge about all this infrastructure is you know phenomenal. So I highly recommend you to um, to follow him. And uh, with this, with this, my friends. Victor, uh, yeah, thanks so much for, for having me. This was fun. Yeah. Uh, great, great to be on the live stream. Really fun stuff. It, 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 is, it is fun. I, I think, like, uh, write down in the comments what you like uh, when we have uh, only Victor doing the talking, like blah, 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 <laughs> and there's a constant blah, 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 blah. Or Victor brings some friends, and we have this chatting conversation. So let us know, because we are uh, looking forward to, you know, make the show in even bigger and uh, cooler so the people who come uh, and spend some time with us will uh, use this time with the you know, uh, purpose and pleasure. With this, dear friends, I would like to say uh, that's a wrap for today. Thank you for being a part of live streams. 